everyone. I'm Mark Sargent. This is Flat Earth Q&A emails number 115, where you send me your Flat Earth questions to msargent23 at comcast.net. That's M-S-A-R-G-E-N-T 23 at comcast.net, and I will do my best to answer them. Uh, let's get this uh, slew of emails out of the way. Uh, let, let's just do it all in one shot. Uh, yes to everyone who is thinking about sending me the Logan Paul article from yesterday. Uh, don't bother. I will read it here for you. But thank you for the first people that, that did send it to me. Uh, I'll just read the one from Fox News because it made national feed. Logan Paul under fire for saying he'll go gay for just one month. A year after the YouTube personality faced a wave of criticism for posting a video which showed the body of an apparent suicide victim in Japan's Aokigahara Forest, Paul made a controversial remark about his 2019 New Year's resolutions, sparking an immediate backlash from fans. During an episode of his impulsive podcast on Wednesday, the 23-year-old and his co-host, Mike Majlak, Majlak? M-A-J-L-A-K, explained that they were going to try a new resolution every month, starting with sober vegan January and fatal February. We're going to go the opposite, Majlex said of February, noting the two will be eating steaks, drinking big bottles of vodka, and just willing out. For March, though, the co-host said that it was male-only March. We're going to attempt to go gay for just one month, Paul stated, for one month, and then swing and then go back. Uh, the comment did not sit well with fans who slammed Paul for insulting the LGBTQ plus community. Really? There's a plus now at the end of it? Uh, whatever. Uh, Dear Logan Paul and any ignorant, hurtful fool, you can't go gay for a month. Being gay is not a choice. This is an insult to the LGBTQ community. I'm just going to say gay community. I'm not going to keep reading those letters. It's just annoying. Uh, stop this nonsense and stop supporting problematic people, one social media uh, user wrote. Tweeted another individual, being gay isn't a choice. Being gay isn't a phase. Being gay shouldn't be used for a trend and subscribers. Grow up, Logan Paul. Literally, F Logan Paul, you just can't go gay for a month. You're literally insulting the gay community. F off, wrote one social media user. Oh, it just gets worse from there. Uh, commented another person, I can't believe Logan Paul is just going to be gay for a month. Like, it's some sort of trend. I'm disgusted. Uh, and then another gay group, activist group, also took issue with Paul's comment, writing on Twitter, that's not how it works. In response, Paul... And this is how the article ends. It's not long. Paul said it was his fault and that it was very poor choice of words. <laughs> that That's that's what he wrote yesterday in the afternoon. Yeah. Because, the, again, the man makes the, the worst decisions and he should not be representing or should be tied to Flat Earth in any way. Vindication is almost mine in its totality. Moving on, let's go. So I, I I will not be reading any other things about the Logan Paul articles. Nobody send me any more things about Logan Paul. I'm just going to let him hang himself with his own rope. Uh, this one's called The Ultimate Proof of Flat Earth. Hey, Mark, I've been following Flat Earth videos for some years now, and obviously I'm proud to say I'm a flat earther. I'm sure the sun and moon is inside the dome. However, just curious why haven't people with amateur rockets aimed at the moon and launched it, as the rocket will then penetrate the moon and hit the dome with such videos that can prove flat Earth and the enclosed world system once and for all. Hoped to hear from you soon. Regards, Sam. Uh, Sam, do you know anyone with an amateur rocket that can reach, I don't know, even 20 miles, let alone 100 miles or further? That's why 99.9999% uh, of the population have no access to any sort of uh, decent rockets. And even those rockets couldn't break 20 miles. Look, only the military has, has access to those sort of rockets. It's just, sorry, it's the way it works. Uh, this one's called Bob Lazar on a Flat Earth. Dear Mark, have you seen the, do do not, the new documentary about Bob Lazar? What do you think about his story? Please send me em empty shelves, the 12 slides, and the other paper. I can't remember what it's actually named, but I believe it has God and throne in it. You may use my name. Thank you, Bruno De Fabio. And uh, no, I do not know anything about the new Bob Lazar story, only that if you guys know him, um, he, he claimed that he worked in Area 51. And sure, why not? Area 51 is a real thing. 
Uh, and, and of course, if anybody wants a copy of the survival guide called Empty Shelves, I will send it to you for free. The 12 slides from Just Jack and the paper, which is called Harmony, which uh, was written by the air traffic controller who went flat earth. So there you go. This one's called Time Machine. Mark, let me know when you get your time machine up and running so I can meet you last Tuesday. <laughs> That's from Rob McKenzie, staying ahead of the curve. Yep. I always mention that I, I love time travel movies. They're probably my favorite movies uh, or, or timeline movies. You know, like they have to do like Groundhog Day or Butterfly Effect or 12 Monkeys. Anything that has to do with time travel because I love the idea of manipulating timelines. I think it's fascinating. This one's called Night Vision Monocular. Hello, can you tell me which night vision monocular you're using? B flat Andre. P.S. Please write me. And it, okay, quick correction. I am not a big fan of night vision monoculars because it only uses one eye. Uh, a night vision monocular would be the, the, the type that you would attach on the type of, top of a rifle. Binoculars, just straight up binoculars, which use both eyes, are, are way better. Trust me, I've used a lot of different night vision equipment. And uh, the, the one I, I use, and heck, I can just say I, I endorse it, but I don't get paid by them because they're in Russia. Uh, you can buy them on Amazon, and it's called Night Owl. And you can get it, you don't have to get, you know, there's three types. There's Gen 1, there's Gen 2, and there's Gen 3. For looking up in the sky and spotting UFOs and stuff like that, and you will see them immediately. Uh, all you need is Gen 1, you don't need Gen 2 or Gen 3, and they get really expensive when you get to Gen, like Gen 1s you can buy for about 500 bucks. And you can get them on Amazon all day long, and, and they're pretty cool. I like Night Night Owl, Night Vision, and 5X. It, don't get the 3X or 2.5X. The 5X is about as good as you're going to get do. Now, you can get a Gen 2 uh, or really high-end Gen 1 and 10X, but Gen 2 is around about 2,000, and then when you get up to Gen 3s, you're talking about 4,000. I mean, it's a, it's a lot of coin if you're just, you know, just looking at stuff flying around in the sky. But if you're a big UFO fan... Highly recommend uh, picking up a Night Owl Night Vision. It's the one that and you can't record out of it. That's my one criticism. And I, in fact, I couldn't find any uh, night vision equipment that would output. That was, I thought, was very, very interesting. Almost a little mini conspiracy in its own. So you can watch this stuff, but you can't output to like an, like an MP4 or uh, um, any sort of video file. I thought that was really fascinating. This one's called Seen This Yet? It's the Flat Earth commercial for, for cough medicine. Yeah, if you guys want to look up some fun stuff, I already posted it on my channel. And that's from Carolyn uh, Gutman Day. And uh, it's the new Robitussin commercial, which is great. They, they, the guy coughs like a purple purple cloud. And uh, the, 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 uh, the other guy mentions that it's about as strange as Flat Earth or something to that degree. It's a short commercial, but it's definitely a Flat Earth commercial. I thought it was great. So check it out, the Robitussin Flat Earth commercial. Super cool. This one's called Giants in the End Time Scaling the Wall. Mark, I talked to you and DRTRH last night, the 8th of January 2019, about the border wall and possible keeping giants out in the end times. I mentioned that very subject in the Canary Cry Radio Facebook group chat. Got this YouTube link to it. And the link, I might as well pump, pop it up for you. It is Attack on the Titan, Episode 1, English Dub. Hmm. That's from Toxic Ghoul, and it's got uh, 750,000 views. It was posted in 2016, and it's got 7,000 thumbs up, but only about less than 200 thumbs down. So, hey, you know, pushing 90-something uh, percent. It's good. I should probably watch that. Cool. Thank you for that. Oops. And I almost lost that. All right. Let's close that out. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. And that's from Nathan Fowler. Oh, I'm sorry. Let, let me. I should read the rest of his thing. Uh, a name. It's called Attack on Titan. Pretty much what I was talking about last night. Things that make you go, hmm. Also, I heard you speak in a Russian accent at the beginning, but it but wasn't quick on the draw to let you know this tidbit. Netflix has a series called The Sniffer. Check it out if you can get past reading closed caption because it's a Russian show. Uh, great. It's great on at that. You can hone your Russian accent. Haha. Ha. Have a good one. Keep it flat. And that's Nathan from Almost Heaven, West Virginia. 
Awesome. This one's called Interesting Idea. Mark, there had been three advanced civilizations on our planet. The first was the Garden of Eden. The second was Atlantis. Third was Earth. People are looking for Atlantis in the wrong place. I think Atlantis was the civilization before us. It does not take very long for evidence of technology to be erased by time. Only a few thousand years it would take for our civilization to be erased if a natural disaster happened. Oh, you, it would take even less than that. Uh, you, can, you can use natural disasters and wipe out most traces. Uh, now, if you want to make it total, yeah, it's going to take some 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 clever uh, terraforming, but you can you can you can get rid of almost all, especially with a, our the human civilization, our uh, Homo sapien uh, civilization. In that, remember, ninety something percent of our population lives on the water, so especially oceans. So you just do most of that with waves. Uh, anyway, check out the documentary Life After People. Yep, yeah, I've seen it. It does not take very long. That's from James. Yeah. Seen it. It's good. Uh, this one's called One If My... <laughs> Look, if you're gonna... You gotta type me something. At least get the title. You know, if you're only using that, it's the words only got five. The title's only got five words. One If My Regular Tweets. No, one of your regular tweets. Come on, man. <laughs> Keep it together. Uh, Mark, at F-E underscore forts, play globe reinforcement, watch any channel, and see how many times the globe is reinforced, both directly and indirectly. Once you see it, you can't unsee it. Subliminal globe reinforcement is amazing once you see it. Hashtag research flat earth, hashtag flat earth podcast, hashtag flat earth, hashtag eight Per eight inches per mile squared, uh, and he uses the little um, double quotes for eight inches, so eight inches per mile. I think he actually got the little squared in there. That's pretty cool. That's neat. And that's from Rob. Thank you, Rob. This one's called "Great Work on Your Video." Mark, I love your video. Which video is he talking about here? I'm always curious when they say I love your video. In this case, the video was. Flat Earth 100 Mile Infrared Test by Jay Tolan. Okay, well, that's interesting. Um, could could I be so bold to ask you if you would like to work together on a project? You can see my early works at this particular... Okay, here's here's the problem. Uh, in this case, it, it, it happens sometimes. So I reproduced Jay Tolan Media's long-range infrared uh, testing that he's done when he's up in an airplane. And this guy thinks that I was the one that actually shot the video, even though I put in the title by Jay Tolan Media. And let's continue on. I believe that with your photos, if documented correctly, we can prove the flat earth. Uh, we pretty much already proved it, but that's all right. All I would need to do is to take your infrared camera to as close to the ocean level as possible. Have a sec He's already done that. Have a second camera videotaping your video recording. Have a measuring stick from the water level to the center of your lens. This way we can document the height that the lens is at. Find an object that is at least 10 miles away, but we have to access the architectural drawings. We thus have a fixed height that they can't dispute. This also applies to the floor height at each level. Then have your phone show the coordinates of the camera shot so we can have documentation of your position. On Google Earth, we find the position of the locations, and thus we have everything. I can run the numbers and send them to you. Take care, George. And you know what? I'm going to have to write him back and say, hey, great idea, but you're going to have to get a hold of J. Tolan Media because I am not him. He lives out in California. He shoots the videos, and I reproduce them from time to time. This one's called Quick Question. Hi, Mark. I believe on the flat Earth, but I wonder how is that the sun remains lighting the South Pole 24 hours a day in some seasons? Thanks in advance, Alfredo. And yeah, it is It is probably the, out of all the points of flat Earth, it's probably the weakest argument, even though the general population doesn't get it, which is when you look at the flat Earth. And normally the flat Earth hits somebody like a truck and they don't realize that if the sun is revolving around, it's like a mobile above a child's crib, that the Antarctic would never be able to get a, a 24 hour sun and which you know we really having a hard time finding video of it anyway but without a second light source it'd be really really tough to do i personally think that there's other there is a second light source involved and that there's optics involved and lighting that we still cannot comprehend remember we're 
we're we're just barely out of the jet age. You know, we're our technology. Remember, hundred years ago, we didn't even have cars. So, you know, even though I, everyone loves to think that we're all high tech and mighty, but that's mostly because of the movies we watch and the movies we create. Uh, yeah, fine. We've got high def televisions and we have computers that you're we're communicating to right, to each other right now, but we have not had them very long. Uh, even 20 years ago, the internet was dial up. So anyway, but so the, the Antarctic, when it comes to the, uh, the technology being used, don't know. I don't know, uh, but I, I'm not too worried. Uh, you know, here we are three, almost four years into the project and the, um, you know, flat earth is not being stopped and it's not even slowing down. It just keeps picking up more and more speed. Moving on. This one's called YouTube Nessa comment section replies that I got. Mark, read this little bit for me. That's from Nathan. Okay, let's open it up and take a look. So this is a comment that he got, and it doesn't say by who, but I will read the comment that he got. The eight inches per mile is simply the rate of curvature and nothing is squared. Oh boy, really? <laughs> because it's a slope. And, I, and by the way, I, I, I will finish this. You know what, I, let, me, let me finish this first and then I'll comment on it. Uh, clearly math is not your thing. Oh boy, this simply means that the earth curves eight inches per mile traveled across the surface. For example, if you were laying down with your eyes right on the surface 30 miles from a mountain whose base begins at the same elevation as your eyes, then you wouldn't be able to see the bottom, 240 inches, 20 feet of that mountain, eight times 30 inches. This isn't perplexing and it's also been demonstrated countless times. The earth is not flat. There are a large number of miles mind experiments you could do to prove so that problem the problem with people like you is that you lack the prerequisite education yeah and he got the curve look we didn't come up with the eight inches per mile squared where where would we have come up with that math that is literally what's listed in wikipedia you can everybody knows i mean that this is what science has out there it's eight inches per mile squared it can't be just eight inches per mile because then it's like your stairs remember stairs is kind of based on that eight inches per stair that's a slope eight inches per per mile is just a slope it, it's a it's an angle um you have to have it increasing so it has to be eight inches per mile squared because that way it gets more and more severe until it finally goes vertical get it that's we didn't come up with it you did anyway nathan thank you for and i know it's one of the reasons i don't read the comment sections because they are just people are in massive denial okay this one's called us and i will read it remember if you guys are going to send me emails please do use paragraph breaks i know you're excited and i know you want to string everything together in one giant paragraph uh but i will i will read this as best i can Hi, Mark. I would like to compare notes with you sometime on a number of things. I'm 65 and I've noticed some awareness lately that seems new. When I watched your first video, I sat there with a big grin on my face the whole time. You mean there are others with open eyes? Wow. The best thing that can happen is a movement to stop reproducing if we want the cat out of the bag. This is a domed world that has many smaller domes on its floor. What is our real size? Who lives in the other domes? Humanity is on a farm. It was recently stocked with different types of humans. There is no way that Sweden can exist today with the, why, oh, what, what's with the Sweden theme today? Uh, with the popularity of blonde Swedish women, if you believe our history in, and timeline, Sweden would be a home of the United Nations with a whole bunch of guys from other countries camped out waiting for another Swedish girl to come outside. <laughs> Oh, I, I want to know where he's going with this. Come back in a hundred years and check their population percentages. Put a... Oh, wow. Then he starts getting racist. Uh, sorry, I can't finish this. Uh, I'll skip past all the racist parts. Uh, it involves eugenics. Sorry, man. No offense, but I, I can't I can't read that. Um, uh, there are news stories about the phenomenon in the L.A. papers. The new type remains true and the races disappear. Uh, things to, so <laughs> things to do. I, I got to read this last part. Stop having kids. Stop supporting the military completely. Start a movement in each state to reclaim its legal autonomy from the legal U.S. government. Start a movement to get rid of the royals. Stop wasting money on NASA. Get rid of Wall Street and Vegas. The only way to get a farmer's attention is for the cows to stop being cows. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. 
That's actually quotable. Uh, nothing including what you are doing happens here without their okay. Watch your back big time. If they are okay with what you are doing, what does that mean? They all want us to become aware of them. Well, I, I do think the end game has to move forward regardless. And they, they know. I mean, eventually you've got to come to a conclusion. The question is, where does that conclusion lead you? Where, where does it turn? I do not know. But thank you for writing. And uh, we'll ho hopefully, if you're listening, please don't. You know, I, I just cannot read stuff. I mean, I, I can t I'll talk about eugenics, sure. But I can't use the, ter the terms you're, you're using. Sorry. Uh, this one's called Direct Flights from Sydney to Santiago, Chile in 12 hours. Hi, Mark. Please comment on this. By the way, I saw uh, saw the Brazilian test if water was flat, and yes, according to them. Hakan from Sweden. Yep. Oh, uh, the Qantas flight. Always the Qantas flight. I have been I have been sent that Qantas flight at least once a month for three years, at least. And I get a lot more in the beginning. Because again, I that's why, and it's not his fault, uh, a lot of people respond. They watch Clue 7, and they, they get freaked out about the flights, and still they start looking them up, and then they write me for, before they get to Clue 9, which talks about how the coordinates are drop-off. There's no GPS coordinates, latitude and longitude. Again, science people tell me where the latitude and longitudes are for these flights. And you say, well, you don't have to show them. It's like, well, they showed them up until that point. Up until the point they got over the water, they're there, and then they disappear. And they don't come back until they're almost to the other destination, until they get within land radar range. That's the point. You cannot prove the route until you have the coordinates. And we don't have them. This one's called Star and Planet Gazing in Seattle. Hello, Mark Whidbey Island here. I'd like to meet some people in the area with a P900 to look at stars and shoot the ships. The ones behind the curve. If you have any context you can share with, that are Whidbey, that'd be awesome. And that's from Kyle. And yeah, if anyone's uh, in the Whidbey Island area, please let me know. And I mean, I, I run into, we've done a bunch of Northwest meetups. Have not met a lot of people in Whidbey, but there are a few. There are a few out there. So if anyone's in Whidbey area, email me. I'll put you in touch with this guy. This one's called About Owen Benjamin's Show Last Night. Hi, Mark. After your last show, I've checked in on Owen's streams. Last night, he was really he was really hard to get any proof from 3,500 live viewers for the Globe Earth. Hope you saw it and nobody could help him, though. I had some good laughs. Thanks for the tip, friend. Greetings from tropical South America. I have some comments in his chat that nobody can prove anything if it's not true. Take care, bro. That's from Peter. Yeah, the Owen Benjamin stuff, and and we'll talk about that a little bit more uh, as we as we wrap this up. Which is uh, he is having a tough, tough journey. Uh, again, he can go on and get thirty five hundred people in the live chat anytime he wants. And when he does, he, or the last time he did it, he was talking about flat Earth, and he was trying to get, he was he was asking people, you know, the the same process that everybody goes through, and that's like prove to me it's a globe. Chat room, prove to me it's a globe. This chat room's hitting him with all the stuff. The, the usual song and dance, and he wasn't buying it. It's like, nope, not good enough. Nope, not good enough. And and they were getting frustrated, and he was getting frustrated. And, and it's it's very interesting watching him go through his live journey through Flat Earth. I, I just, I, I've really been digging how his mind is, is starting to turn into that new paradigm. And anyway, we'll talk more about this at the end. This one's called All Aboard the Flat Earth Cruise. Just don't tell them about nautical navigation. Uh, Mark, check out this article. And it's like, okay, and it's from The Guardian, which is interesting because remember, The Guardian's doing a documentary on the Flat Earth community. and it, But there are other people. In fact, we run into this in the same news media organization. We'll run into multiple people that will be pro and con. So this particular story, which was written by nobody's going to take the credit for this. There, it is It is written by, oh, I'm sorry, Adam Gabbat, G-A-B-B-A-T-T. -T. Uh, it is uh, an article with a cruise boat in the front of it. It says, all aboard the Flat Earth Cruise. Just don't tell them about nautical navigation. Flat Earthers who believe the Earth is a large disk may be shocked to find the ship's navigation is based on a spherical planet. Yeah, guy hates us a lot, so much that he created this article out of nowhere. Nobody's made an article like this. And he's talking about the, the Flat Earth Cruise, which was scheduled for 2020. I don't think it's still scheduled for 2020. 
I don't know if it is. Maybe it is. I don't know. The next one's in Dallas. Uh, but he had to take a shot. And so um, the crew is organized by the Flat Earth International Conference. Promises uh, to be a lovely time. Flat Earthers, who include the rapper B.O.B. and reality television person Tila Tequila. I know how I know how you uh, just exclude Kyrie Irving and Shaquille O'Neal and all the other athletes, but that's fine. We'll be able to enjoy restaurants, swimming pools, and perhaps even an artificial surf wave. There's just one problem with those seeking to celebrate the flatness of the Earth. Navigational systems, cruise ships, and other vessels rely on the fact that the Earth is not flat, theoretically puncturing the beliefs of the flat Earth crowd. Yeah. Uh, no, it's based on the GPS system, which was designed by the United States military. And that means that you can't be trusted at all. But I understand, look, he wants to hold on to the globe. I know he does. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm not mad at him, but it's in, but it's in his head. It's in his head enough that he actually had to write a full-blown article about it. So check it out if you get a chance. It's at theguardian.com called Flat Earth Cruise Nautical Navigation. Moving on. This one's called Dome Question. Hi, Mark. My question is about the dome. So I will start with saying I have seen the video of the amateur rocket hitting the dome around 73 miles up. So my question I have is about the sun and the moon. Are they inside the dome or outside the dome? I believe we don't live on a spinning ball, and I'm convinced our world is flat. The only thing I have trouble understanding is how close the sun and moon are. I appreciate your time and look forward to hearing back from you. Have a good day. And that's from Wes Robbins. Uh, and yeah, it, my personal opinion, I think they're higher than 73 miles. I do. Um, but then again, they may not be. I mean, I, I'm, I'm not going to bet the farm on it because I, what if, you know, what if they're not? I mean, none of the, none of my major theories revolve around a specific altitude for the sun and the moon, only that they are about the same size and they, they, um, uh, deliberately. And one generates an incandescent light. The other generates a cold laser light. Those are the only things I, I really would stick to. As far as the height goes, it doesn't really matter. Because remember, um, commercial airlines cap out at about, what did I say, 20 miles? 20 miles? 20 miles? No, no, 10 miles. 10 miles. Commercial airlines cap out at about 10 miles. Spy planes cap out at 20 miles. And so 73 miles, nobody's going there anyway. So, but thank you for the question. I get it all the time. Again, is it inside or outside the dome? Don't know. Don't know. I would like to think it's out or, you know, it's high, high up inside the dome, but it could be instanced as well. But it's kind of a complex theory to, to run by people. I try to keep it as simple as possible because the average person on the street doesn't even understand eight inches per mile squared. So that's, that's all I got at the moment. This one's called Owen Benjamin is out there. Mark, listen to this segment from Owen. He's literally on the journey. He's debating people on flat earth points for two minutes. It's wonderful. Uh, said he's on a new topic, the spinning earth. Yeah. Yeah. If you guys haven't checked out Owen Benjamin's channel yet, you really should. He was a, um, a regular comedian in the circuit. He rubbed elbows with a lot of people in Hollywood, especially the, the, the comedy legends and then i think he spoke out against vaccinations and that was it that was that was the um that was the end of his, his thing he, he was he was ostracized and now he's scrambling with podcasts all right this one's called bob flat earth on netflix hey mark currently watching this show on netflix called drop and cash Season one, episode one. Rapper B.O.B. just said, when I die, I want to be cremated and buried in a weed plant. By the way, he means marijuana. And so when I die, they can smoke it like I'm smoking Bob. It's going to be Flat Earth OG, which stands for original gangster. Interesting, and I thought I'd share. I am about to continue watching to see what else he might say. Not a ball, not spinning, keeping it flat in Kansas City. That's from Chris. Uh, yeah, that's very, very interesting. I hope somebody can get the um, the audio on that. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll send it to a few people. Very, very interesting. Uh, and yeah, I didn't, again, once you're flat, you're never going to go back to the, to the globe and B.O.B., even though he, I mean, technically he is kind of a flat earth original gangster because he did his thing at the end of 2015, beginning of 2016. And he's, he's been in it longer than most, longer than most celebs. So good for him. And, uh, I'm glad he's keeping it flat. 
Very, very cool. This one's called Latest Owen Benjamin Flat Earth Rant. Mark, this is okay to read on air. Good to know. Uh, did you see Owen's latest Effie rant? I saw it on DRTRH channel called Owen Benjamin. I don't want to be a flat earth person. Amazing video that visually brings out what we can only imagine what you went through back during your nine months of angst trying to disprove flat earth back in 2014 and 2015. Parents, just to be aware that Owen does not hold back and the rant is peppered with several F-bombs throughout the 26-minute video, but otherwise an amazing discussion on this topic with his chat room as he prepares to debate Eric Dubay, which appears to be in the near future. An interesting part of the video is where a chat room guest advises him to use the Coriolis effect to prove the ball earth, and Owen seems to agree that is a good weapon. Unfortunately for Owen, that... Little does he realize that none of the armed forces, including snipers, actually use the formula. So it may be in the textbook, but why is no one using it? Didn't you have several subject matter experts come on and say we never use it? And one guest say we tried using it, but, for our, aim, but our aim got worse, so we dropped it. Perhaps you recall these discussions. Yeah, I, I, they're all listed. They're all in a, a playlist called Flat Earth Testimony Shows by Subject Matter Experts. And you can find it on my YouTube channel. It's I've got quite a few playlists in there, and the testimony shows if you want to listen to people talking, you know, in different professions and uh, all branches of the military and engineers and pilots and um, air traffic controllers and you name it, they're all in there. Uh, by all means, I mean they they take a while. Each one of those interviews is a couple hours, but they're they're totally worth it. Uh, great video overall. Is there any way you can get Owen on Strange World for an interview? That would be awesome. Take care, Sarge. Jack Frost. Would love to talk to Owen on Strange World. I, even with profanity, I don't I don't care. I know he's a hardcore comedian. And, and, he, and so, yeah, if, if anyone wants to reach out on my behalf, they want to get a hold of him and, and say, hey, Mark Such would love to talk to you on Strange World or any of the, the Flyer shows. You know, there's like five or six of them now on True Frequency Radio. I would, I would love to talk to him. So please, by all means, reach out on my behalf. Say, look, Mark would be happy. You know, I, I will adjust uh, my schedule. I'll do a pre-record if I, if I have to for him. I think, I think it'd be great just to listen to him and uh, see what's on his mind if he's got questions and whatever's going on in his head. Uh, and, and I think it'd be great. So, in fact, we'll talk again. We'll talk about Owen here in a little bit as we wind down these emails. But thank you for that, Jack Frost. This one's called Alive on the Island of St. John. If you guys don't remember, in 2018, there was a huge windstorm that came through and just pummeled the, the Virgin Islands, uh, including the Isle, uh, islands of uh, St. John, St. Thomas. And one of our guys out there, because we you know we have flat earthers everywhere. In fact, he's one of the flat earth license plate club, uh, Peter. He, he's writing me, and so he says, Hello, Mark. Hope all is well. I'd like to bring to everyone's attention the very obvious characteristics of water. This past June, when I was in Costa Rica, the day before I flew out of San Jose, uh, Costa Rica, to return home, it rained really hard for hours. While flying out, we flew north of the Nicaragua coastline for a good long time, heading towards Miami with very clear skies. Being a non-globe believer, I always get myself a window seat when I fly. Window seats are always north uh, I'm sorry, always worth the price of admission. Looking down at those brown, muddy rivers flowing out of the mountains and into the Caribbean Sea, it becomes so obvious that water always seeks and finds level. From my window seat, enjoying the show of muddy water from the rainstorms the day before, now washing out of the mountains and reaching the seawater, it stalls and mushrooms at the mouth of each river. At that point, you can see the non-salt water join the salt water and become one. One level service of seawater. It's the salt water we need to focus on and not the lakes, no matter their size. A lake can be compared to a huge bathtub. So for me, uh, if the salt water we need to conduct the test, the curvature test on, not the lakes. From my home on St. John, I can see St. Croix, 40 miles south, standing straight up, not tilted back at all. And with my P900, I can also see some very low-lying parts of St. Croix. Wish I had a laser beam I could aim at St. Croix and prove there is no hump of salt water present. Um, you know what? You don't even need, uh, hopefully you're listening to this, Peter. In fact, I will, I will email him and say that I read this in the show. I don't do that very often in this case because uh, he's out there in the middle of nowhere. I'm going to let him know, but you don't need it. Uh, the California team 
and that would be uh, Flat Earth Uber and um, uh, Wendell and Sydney and, and everybody else out there and, and Nathan. Um, they, uh, they, they did it with a mirror that you don't need a laser. In, in the middle of the day, you do, in fact, you can do the test in the middle of the day without a laser. Uh, just use a mirror at the beach level, uh, like, a, like a, a hallway mirror. And put it on the in the sand and just shine, you know, wobble it back and forth with the sun, you know, making sure it's hitting the mirror, if you can, and it's bright enough that you that you can see it. And I think that's great. And people say, oh no, it's a mirage. It's not a mirage. Uh, this one's called Flat Earth and the Bible Thumping Crowd. Ooh, could be anti-religious. Good morning, Mark. This is Darren Schultz from Idaho. I asked you for your major con song a few months back. Thank you for that. This message is a tad long. It's not that long. I respect your time and opinion and hope you will read it to the end. I become frustrated with the Jesus crowd pushing their religion at the conferences. Just because the earth is flat doesn't automatically equate to Jesus died on the cross. Therefore, you must be saved or you go to hell. Atheists are believing a creator because the flat earth and Christians are preying upon them to convert them to a religion founded on ancient human blood sacrifice and the fear of hell. These atheists are new baby converts to creationism and could easily be sucked into another deception if there is not an alternative offering to fill their new vacuum. I appreciate that you have not pushed your religion, although you mentioned you have a history in Christianity. I'm developing a thesis and I'm looking for some reasonable, someone reasonable to discuss it with and thought of you. In addition to the atheist, Christian have also shifted their paradigm to the nature of the earth and acknowledged that there is a large conspiracy to cover the truth by government and authoritative sources. I propose this conspiracy also includes religion. If the Christian crowd is honest, they should be willing to also consider that religion needs to be examined the same way the globe theory has been examined to discover the truth. If we're going to rail against the lies of NASA, then let's also rail against the New Testament because it, it is also fraught with myth, forgeries, and manipulation. In my opinion, flat earth should not be the new christian gospel tract but christians are using this as their leverage device i'm dismayed that they are taking over the movement and have thrown you under the bus throw me under the bus not necessarily i, I don't think that at all look I, look we're in america america is primary even though it's the melting pot uh it is primarily uh, christian based if you're in other countries it would be something else but in america that's where we are Plain and simple. I mean, there's a lot of different versions of Christianity scattered across the country, but it's still you know, Christian based. There's a lot of churches here, a lot of cross based churches. Anyway, he goes on. Uh, I am curious if our religious paths are similar. I used to be a baptized evangelical Baptist, Baptist Christian. My eyes were open to flat earth and my quest for truth did not stop there. I'm asking if you're interested to discuss these topics and to explore the application of truth seeking to the history of the new testament and its conspiracy to also deceive the masses your reply is much appreciated i am open to email or phone call mornings are best thanks for your time darren schultz uh no i when it, what you're asking me is am i going to attack the church no i'm not not even close i was i was born and raised on on, on the church and, John 3.16 might as well have been a t-shirt. In fact, there were several friends of mine that had John 3.16 t-shirts. Um, church was not a Sunday thing uh, for us. We had youth group. We had vacation Bible school. I actually went to Camp Malibu up in Canada uh, back in the uh, 80s. <clears throat> it is it is well, it's part of my life. Uh, you asking me to attack Christianity goes along the same lines as when Matt Boylan asked me to attack the Catholics in the very beginning back in 2015 sorry not gonna do it i understand your frustration with some religion and uh you're bracing against it you know no no group is perfect and everybody has their flaws uh but no i'm not going to be attacking the church in any way shape or form this one's called moon maybe if it opens Okay, this one it just took a while to come up. Hi, Mark, a question. Uh, is, English is not his main language. If Earth is flat, it's from uh, Sweden, how can we see the crescent moon shape from Earth? Okay, if uh, an MKer can do all this, he can do a grood in the Dewey and a bug computer screen, but why get us the crescent? I mailed you from Sweden 
and a mail with three questions. I guess you had a lot to do. I don't expect get back answers, but I saw your series on YouTube and one could mail you. And that's from Hakan Nordstrom in Sweden. P.S. It's impossible for a man to has a clue on all this really. We don't know nothing of nothing, and that's the cruel fact. What I love it he, is he spelled cruel, C-R-U-L-E, which phonetically is correct. <laughs> I love it. Uh, let's see how what Chinese send back from the new from the moon, uh, maybe the earth in one picture. Uh, again, he's he, it's in his head, and when people ask me about what you know, why are there crescent? Why are there waxing and waning crescents? Why is there a blood moon? Uh, go to a planetarium. We can do that now. How, what do you, how do you think we do it in a planetarium? Oh, we do it with a with projection screen, images, and stuff that you know, manip computer manipulation. It's like, and you know, I'm I'm trying to coax people on. It's like, could is it possible in advanced technology or the divine be able to do that on a much larger scale? And they just stare at me and they they look at me like I asked them some sort of math problem. This one's called Celestial Sphere of Greek Teachings is the Dome of Our Flat Earth. Mark, just so you know, Johnny Exodice lives. And it's from Johnny Exodice. Cool. Awesome. Very short and confusing email. This one's called Hi Mark Images and a video. What does this video video un, unavailable? <laughs> and it was just sent. It was just sent yesterday. It was just sent yesterday. Thank you from Andres Watt. I, I don't know what happened. Uh, this one's called Night Vision Goggles Link. Please, Mark, can you please send me the link to the Night Vision Goggles you have? I want to buy the same model. Again, I use Night Owl Night Vision binoculars in 5X, 5 Power. They're not, they will not break the bank. They're only about 500 bucks. And if you're a big UFO person, if you're not a UFO person, then, then don't look. Uh, you know, I don't recommend it. But if you are, then by all means, check it out. Totally worth it. You'll, all you have to do is, they're battery powered. It takes one CR123 battery. And uh, they're basically just, they're not actually lenses. They're cameras. And uh, I mean, yeah, there's there's a lens on it, but I mean, it's it's basically a camera. And um, when you're looking through it, one camera for each eye, and you can individually focus them. And when you're looking up at the sky, you're seeing a lot of stuff flying around that you cannot see with the naked eye. And you're going, oh well, that's just satellites. And then you watch these satellites do things that satellites don't do, like fly in formation and go ballistic and slow down and speed up and make right and left hand turns and all this other stuff. And, and flash. It's really, really interesting. So, but again, if you're not into UFOs, don't look up. But I, I got into it because there was a British guy who was talking on this little documentary at the very end. It was really cool. At the very, I, didn't, I missed most of it. And the very end, he goes, you want to see some interesting stuff? Get some night vision. Start looking up. He was absolutely right. One of the, the best little pieces of advice I ever, ever got from a conspiracy guy. This one's called, What Object is Causing These Solar and Lunar Eclipses? Hi, Mark. I don't think anyone has even posed this question. Oh, I doubt that. I think we, we've looked under just about every rock you can think of. Uh, but maybe you'd know, in the day and night model of the flat Earth, there's no way a so solar or lunar eclipse could ever occur. So what object is calling the, causing the solar and lunar eclipses? The third object, potentially the black sun. Thanks, Eben Kim. Uh, I think I, I'm going to go with Mike Helmick's uh, thing where he did a video earlier in 2018 where he was saying that the eclipse was, uh, that the, the, the eclipse, when it, when it happens, it's self-eclipsing. Meaning that the, the, like the moon, like when you're in a planetarium, the, the moon is waxing and waning crescent, right? But there's obviously nothing going in front of the moon because you're in a planetarium and yet it still happens. That's because in a planetarium, the moon is self-eclipsing. The system is shutting down part of the light source. Same thing can happen with the sun. So that's what it is, in my opinion. Uh, again, we never ever thought of a waxing and waning uh, crescent for the sun. It's always just been the sun because 99.9% .9 of the time, it's a full-blown disk sun. But when you see it with the eclipse, it's not. And then it all of a sudden occurs to you. That's very interesting. Mike Helmick's, I loved his line. He goes, he goes, nothing is eclipsing the sun. 
And I go, what? What are you talking? He goes, there's no three-dimensional object that's passing in front of the sun. It's doing it on its own. Fascinating. This one's called No Subject. Hey, Mark, check out Bill Nye having an epic meltdown. Uh, yeah, this is a, was a really interesting video that uh, was sent to me. It's by Vincent Rhodes, and I'm already subscribed to him, and it's called Watch Bill Nye Meltdown, Glitch in the Matrix, Flat Earth Rules. And yeah, he was, he was being interviewed. And I know the editing, you know, they compiled all the Flat Earth things, but you could tell that Flat Earth was really, really bothering Bill Nye. And of course it is, because it's spreading everywhere. And so if you're a scientist, people are going to ask you about it. Um, kind of like the opposite of, of the Kyrie Irving thing. It works both ways. So when Kyrie Irving said he was a flat earther a couple of years ago, every interviewer, every sports writer kept that in their back pocket to where when they're talking to him, because remember, most athlete interviews are super boring and they came to him and now they say, you know, it's just inevitable. They say, hey, so you still believe in flat earth? Hey, you still believe in flat earth? Well, the same thing applies to scientists to where flat earth is now everywhere to where scientists are like, oh, hey, have you heard about this flat earth? Hey, have you heard about this flat earth? And scientists like, well, again, Bill Nye is not a scientist in any way, shape or form. You guys know I've done videos on that. Uh, just to clarify, for those of you who've been living in a cave for a while, Bill Nye has a bachelor's degree in mechanical, mechanical engineering. That's what he got his degree in. He n didn't use it. He went to Boeing for a little bit, then immediately became an actor uh, and not even a Hollywood actor, a Seattle actor. And he was on a show called Almost Live. I grew up with the guy. He was a, a character actor in a sketch comedy guy in, in Seattle. And uh, it wasn't even his idea. Ross Schaefer, he says, oh, hey, you're tall and have angular features. Put on this lab coat and start doing little science experiments. And it went very well in Seattle. And Disney was looking for something new. And so they created this thing called Bill Nye the Science Guy. And they had him on there. And they, they developed this little show. And it lasted for like five, six years. And then it became syndicated forever. Mm -hmm. Because it's Disney. Disney. Disney saves all that stuff. And he never, you know, that was it. That was that was literally all he did. And the thing was, because people say, oh, he's a smart guy. He does science things. He's good on television answering science questions. Kind of. But the thing is, he's being invited on stuff where he has no business being. It's like, why is Bill Nye talking about climate change? Why is he a consultant on the Mars rover? Why is he talking about quantum physics? The man has a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering. And he can say, oh, I took six semesters of calculus. That doesn't mean you should be talking about climate change. It doesn't mean you should be on CNN being interviewed about climate change. Just staggering. Anyway, so yeah, if you want to have some fun, watch Bill Nye get tortured uh, about this topic. All right, let's, uh, we'll end on this email, then I'll talk briefly uh, about uh, the Owen Benjamin thing. We'll wrap this up. Uh, this was perfect one to end on. Mark, uh, Mark, you crossed my mind at the moment. How are you doing, Mark? <laughs> That's from Shane. I'm doing fine. Uh, looking forward to 2019. A lot of meetups happening. Uh, no, I haven't booked the thing for San Francisco yet because I'm still waiting for, uh, again, you, you guys want to fly me out to any meetups. I'm happy to do it. And so I'm being flown out to one in San Francisco. I don't have the date yet. And then we'll see about Los Angeles in February for the QE question everything 2019. And then there's some other things that are happening throughout the year. 2019 is going to be a great year. And I'm really excited, by the way, um, uh, going off topic of the tour, the Globe Lie tour that's happening over in Europe uh, and um, uh, Roxanne Glenn, the globalist denier, she's just doing a bang up job over there. She's just crushing it. And I was just, uh, just, just floored that, that they're going to be doing, uh, I mean, a bigger van and they're going to be driving something like 14,000 miles and stopping in all these cities. It is going to be great, 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 great. And I'm, I'm very, very excited for them. Uh, but let's end on one more topic because I know other people, another thing you do not have to send me emails on and that was because I've, I've already gotten it through Skype chat, which was the Eric Dubay, uh, the debate, which hasn't happened yet. And it's not really going to be a debate. It's going to be more of a discussion than anything else uh, with Owen Benjamin and Eric Dubay. What was interesting was that Eric decided to uh, and, and why not? I mean, I, I myself got into the chat room. You know, if you have a, when Owen Benjamin does a live stream, he has 3,500 people in there. So the chat room, as you can imagine, is moving pretty quick. And Aaron goes, Eric goes in there and he starts giving him grief, starts giving Owen Benjamin grief, like questioning if he's a, really a truther or not. 
And it's like, what what are you doing? It's like, remember, you only get one chance to get a make a first impression. And and to where Owen was just losing it. He's going, he goes next, and he was popping off to, at him. And and I know, again, you know, Eric runs the International Flat Earth Research Society where he's proclaimed himself king and he bans people on a regular basis, you know, bans them from the website. And he usually gets his way. But it's not, when you go to somebody else's house, you can't act like that. And that's what he was doing. And he almost got banned for life. I mean, Owen's sitting there threatening to ban him. And Eric's, I'm looking, I'm listening to this. I'm, I'm listening to this go back and forth. This isn't in chat. Owen's actually saying this live on camera. And, and I, I, I was stunned. It's like, what are you doing? Come on, man. It's like, Owen is an ally. He is somebody to be treated with respect. And I don't know, let's just boil it down. Be nice, right? He's a brand new flat earther. His mind is spinning. What are you attacking him for in the middle of his group? The member, most of those 3,500 people are his. So what, what are you thinking? Uh, and you're going to do a video debate with him? You're going to you're going to talk about it? I mean, I, I I'll make a prediction right now up front. Any any Eric followers see if I'm wrong on this one. I think he's going to do the same thing. I mean, Eric that he did with uh, Eddie Bravo, which is he was absolutely fine up the first 90 minutes and after that he got too comfortable and just started popping off. And Fine, Owen's friends with Alex Jones. Does that mean you should attack him? No, no, it doesn't. Uh, Eddie Bravo was friends with Alex Jones, and Eric goes off in this rant to where he was doing his really bad, obnoxious impersonation of Alex Jones, to where Eddie cut him off. He, you know, said, "Oh no, it was, a, it was a connection thing." No, no, it wasn't. <laughs> Eddie killed the feed and brought him back in audio later after he got him to cool down a bit. It's like, don't, don't make the same mistake twice here. Don't just start popping off. Don't mention anything about how much you hate Jewish people. Don't go off on Alex Jones. Just be nice. It's the first time you're talking to the guy, you know, and you're coming from that, you know, you're representing the flat earth community. Don't freak, you know, he, Owen Benjamin is trying. He's trying to get in the community. He's trying very hard. This isn't a Logan Paul scenario. You can see that that Owen is sincerely on the fence here, trying to figure out what he can do with this. And he, I think he would be valuable to the community. He's outspoken about a, a whole bunch of things. And so why not, why not be outspoken about this? Anyway, enough about that. So keep an eye out for the Eric DeBay, Owen Benjamin debate slash discussion. And we'll see where, where that goes, but you don't have to keep, you don't have to email me about that. I'm, I'm totally aware of what, of what's happening there. I'm going to keep my eyes and ears peeled if that's a thing. Anyway, thanks for everybody that uh, had emailed me so far and anywhere in the future. Don't forget it's M Sergeant 23 at Comcast.net. That's M S A R G E N T 23 at Comcast.net until next time, guys. Stay flat.